appropriation for the MCPS's FY15 capital budget and amendment to the FY15 through 20 capital improvements program. It's $1.3 million for Winston Churchill High School artificial turf and the source would be contributions. An Ed Committee work session is tentatively scheduled for Monday, July 28th at 9.30 a.m. Any persons wishing to submit additional comments should do so by the close of business on Wednesday, July 23rd, so that your views can be included in the material which staff will prepare for the committee's consideration. We do have three speakers for today's hearing, Janice Sartucci, Jerry Garson, and, jo and Doug Schusler. If you could please come up. And Ms. Sartucci, you've got the floor first. Yes, you pushed the button right at the base of the microphone there. There you go. Good afternoon. The Montgomery County Council has been in this position before, and your last decision on a similar Montgomery County Board of Education proposal cost taxpayers $205,178. The Board of Education has made it very clear in their proposal to install artificial turf at Churchill High School that if the outside funding is not sufficient, the Board will make up the difference. This is exactly the same scenario as with Wooten High School artificial turf deal. The Board of Education told you the field would be paid for from outside funds. However, the Board does not put out requests for proposal or take bids they, when they install an artificial turf field. The constru construction projects are not bid out, and the sole source supplier field turf can set any price they desire for these projects. In the Wooten High School situation, the price turned out to be $205,178 over the outside contributions. The money had to be made up from the MCPS budget. The proposal before you today is exactly the same as the Wooten High School proposal. The board says the project will cost approximately $1.3 million. If the project goes over $1.3 million, where will the extra funds come from? Will taxpayers once again be on the hook for the surprise increase? The memo from Superintendent Starr once again says that MCPS will make up any differences in cost. The assertion that any surprise increase in cost can be made up from community use is not based on any known facts. MCPS is estimating that the fees from community use of the existing six artificial turf fields will only bring in $40,000 in FY14. At that rate, it's going to take five years to pay off the Wooten High School debt. Any Churchill High School debt wouldn't be paid back from these fees until after 2019. Please note that the Churchill lease is for 10 years. That's, ten, that's beyond the useful life of artificial turf field. The, the, I'm sorry, the Walter Johnson High School field is already disintegrating after only five years, and the Richard Montgomery High School field is fading after only six. Nineteen tons of crumb rubber washed off the Richard Montgomery High School artificial turf field in the first two years and had to be replaced. The annual maintenance cost of MCPS artificial turf fields is not known. And just a fun fact to leave you with here today, each crumb rubber artificial turf field requires 120 tons of crumb rubber. The six current fields have a total of 720 tons of crumb rubber to remain playable. That means that MCPS and Montgomery County government has dumped approximately 140,000 shredded used tires onto sports fields in the county. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Sartucci. Mr. Garson. President Rice and members of the County Council, I'm Jerry Gosson, the Treasurer of Regents of the Estate Citizens Association. We question why the Board of Education has not held any public meetings with the community to discuss the proposed limit of 150 hours of community use in the field. A review of the financial statements of the Bethesda Lacrosse and the Potomac Soccer Association filed with the Internal Revenue Service raises the question of where these organizations have the cash to provide to the contribution of $1,050,000 to Montgomery County School System. Will the taxpayers of Montgomery County have to provide funds for this project? We also question the amount these organizations will pay for 10,000 hours of use at just $105 an hour. Will this cover all the care and maintenance of the field over 10 years, or will the taxpayers of Montgomery County have to make up the shortfall? The Winston Churchill High School is located in a residential R90 zone. The proposal for the pri public-private partnership that can use Churchill High School field for 1,000 hours per year and limit public access. Is this change of use to a recreation and entertainment facility outdoor capacity up to 1,000 persons permitted in an R90 zone? The new council approved zoning proposal only allows such a project in an R zone, an, R2E, two, an RE2C, or an R200 or commercial zones, and these are only by conditional use. 
We also note that the Washington Suburban Sanitary Commission does not appear to have been contacted to find out their opinions of building an artificial turf within 80 feet of their high-pressure 96-inch precast concrete water mains, which is over 50 years old. It has already failed right in front of the field about three years ago. We also question the statement that the artificial turf on the stadium field is a solution that will provide safer playing conditions for Montgomery County Public School students while allowing many hours of community use. We note that the local Washington NFL football team has just opened three new practice fields using natural gas. I can't mention the full name of the, of the group. Uh, we request that any new artificial turf be constructed in our neighborhood to be constructed with cork, rice husks, and coconut shells like the one currently being constructed in Gaithersburg, Maryland, which the school board members say they like this uh, method. Instead of having our children playing on cr a crumb rubber field, by having children playing the following chemicals usually found in shredded rubber tires, which is the proposed field made from carbon black, which is the largest component. In the U.S., carbon black is subject to annual inventory reporting requirements under Section 311 and 312 of the Emergency Planning Community Right to No Act of 1986, SARA Title III, if carbon black is used in quantities of 10,000 pounds or greater during a calendar year. Carbon black is subject to these requirements because it is regulated under the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA Subpart Z 29 CFR 1910.1000. Has Montgomery County complied with these requirements? Uh, uh, an artificial, uh, the County Council on September 11, 2012, approved a bill prohibiting uh, coal tar being used on pavement. Uh, how come if coal tar is no good to be put on private homes, you want crumb rubber uh, on a public field? I thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Mr. Garson. Mr. Schusler. Thank you. My name is Doug Schusler, and I'm the executive director of Montgomery Soccer, Inc., better known to generations of Montgomery County families simply as MSI. Uh, I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today, uh, and I want to thank Montgomery County for all of its extensive efforts to support recreational programs for all of our kids. Mr. Schusler, can you pull the microphone a little bit more towards you? There you go. Thank you. Um, I think it's obvious that we are a community overall that cares greatly about providing our youth terrific opportunities for very healthy activities. Most of you are very familiar with MSI and readily recognize the extent to which we are an organization truly committed to the concept of community service as we endeavor to genuinely serve the nearly 15,000 Montgomery County children enrolled in our programs. Additionally, MSI works to weave an ethic of community service into everything we do, ranging from our partnerships with Special Olympics, in which MSI provides organized programs for children with special needs and disabilities, to our organization of twice annual food drives to stock the Mana Food Shelter with one of their top five annual contributions of food supplies for Montgomery fam County families in need, to our vast outreach programs to communities with social and economic disadvantages, working with various county, municipal, and in-school social service coordinators to bring opportunity to children who otherwise would be left out, and to our commitment to providing these high-quality programs for the masses with participation fees kept extremely low to facilitate opportunity for all with massive amounts of financial aid provided for families that are struggling, and so much more. I think it's fair to say that no other youth recreation organization works as hard as MSI to not only provide opportunity for those in need, but also to weave that ethic of awareness for those less fortunate into our programs. That said, we have a problem. Montgomery County soccer fields are of substantially lower quality than anyone would like, and we could talk all day about the reasons for that. They do not provide playing surfaces that promote enjoyment and continued participation by the masses. However, the manner in which partnerships have been developed by the Board of Education for high-quality high school stadium fields has prioritized access to organizations focused on much smaller numbers of players who represent either elite athletic communities, the wealthiest communities, or both. Significantly, the Montgomery County Board of Education has utilized a legally flawed process for the selection of community partners for use of these few high-quality fields, including the Winston Churchill High School Stadium field development and the Richard Montgomery High School Stadium field lease. This process and the resulting awards now are the subject of ongoing litigation at the State Board of Education and the Circuit Court for Montgomery County. And none of this even begins to address the other high school stadium fields that exist that similarly have been dedicated to these types of organizations. I respectfully request that the Montgomery County Council 
defer action regarding the requested appropriation at this time until the legal challenge proceeds to its conclusion. Thank you for the opportunity to speak on behalf of the masses of children that would appreciate the opportunity for at least occasional use of high quality playing fields. And I appreciate your consideration of our request. Thank you. Thank you very much. I do see one light on. Council Member Berliner. Thank you, Council President. And this can be a question for our staff or Mr. Song. I see that you're here if you care to care to speak. There is a, a great deal of interest here on this council and in the larger community to get past chrome rubber artificial turf. Um, my colleagues and I spent a lot of time on this issue, as you'll recall, and we've said if we're going to use artificial turf, we want to be using best practices from around the country. I know that you have put out, as I understand it, a bid that would, could include the next generation of artificial turf, which would be either cork or coconut. Can you speak to your boards or the MCPS's commitment, let's assume for purposes of this there's a dollar difference, okay? I'm going to assume that the next generation costs more, okay? That, sure. that cork will cost more. Is that a fair characterization based on just your instinct with respect to this, or is that not a fair statement? A um, few questions. Yeah, I th we believe that uh, coconut fiber slash cork infill mix is going to cost a lot more than the crumb rubber that we've been using, but to the extent how much more is yet to be determined. And I think before I came to the uh, council uh, a few years ago, or you know, almost a year ago, regarding the uh, ins installation at Wooten High School, uh, I've stated that uh, this particular infill mix has been installed at University of Maryland, that we're evaluating its performance and other safety factors, and that will be considered as part of the future uh, projects. And that's what we're exactly doing. Um, the when Board of Education took this matter um, a few weeks ago, they have explicitly stated their preference is to use the coconut fiber slash cork material, um, but as a bidding process to make sure that we bring the project within the budget and it's just to see how much more it's going to cost for future reference to the more artificial turf to be installed, we're going to bid it out both ways so that we can exactly determine what is the um, the uh, crumb rubber cost versus the um, coconut uh, fiber slash the uh, cork material. And so assuming it does cost more, have you, if, if it turns out that coconut and cork cost more, are you prepared to pay more is my fundamental question. Well, there will be the uh, uh, decision of the board, uh, as I'm not the contractee. Uh, we will be uh, bidding it both ways so that both can evaluate both ways in context of what the overall cost of the project is. Uh, as I said, it, not knowing the, what the overall project cost is, it's hard to determine what the cost-benefit analysis would be. Uh, the board has ex specifically said their preference is to utilize the uh, coconut fiber slash the uh, cork material. I'm reluctant to get into a matter that is clearly now a subject of litigation, but allegations have been made with respect to the manner in which you awarded right. these contracts. Do you care to speak to it at all? Uh, just to state that, yes, we did receive um, the uh, uh, legal challenges relating to the procurement process that is conducted on the way, and our legal counsels are reviewing its allegations. Uh, but I can't state all the details, information, not to compromise the positions at this point. It does, it does make it awkward for, for all of us when a matter is pending uh, litigation. Um, so I look forward to the, the committee advising us with respect to these sets of issues and how we are supposed to take these issues in. There have been serious allegations and unhappiness. Uh, so need to understand it. Look forward to the chair's recommendations on those matters. Well, thank you very much, Councilmember Berliner, and let me say that um, I was actually at that meeting, uh, both myself as well as uh, Council Vice President Leventhal, and I heard uh, many board members express uh, their goal uh, to get us to uh, a different kind of field. I think that us here on the dais have expressed our intent to get us to a different kind of field, understanding that why take the risk if we don't need to, and we can also ensure the durability of the long term durability of uh, these fields in continuing to service all of our community. 
I will uh, assure my colleagues before I turn it over at that meeting, uh, not uh, both myself as well as uh, Council Vice President Leventhal, and I heard uh, many board members express uh, their goal uh, to get us to uh, a different kind of field. I think that us here on the dais have expressed our intent to get us to a different kind of field, understanding that why take the risk if we don't need to, and we can also ensure the durability of uh, the long term durability of uh, these fields in continuing to service all of our community. I will uh, assure my colleagues before I turn it over, there are a number of other lights on that uh, this education committee. Uh, we'll take uh, this under serious advisement when it comes to uh, some of the legal ramifications and we will actually get uh, a legal opinion uh, as well in terms of what our best next steps will be uh, as well. So with that, Councilmember Branson. Yeah, thank you. I want to just be sure that I got this. Um, um, the Ms. Artucci um, indicated that that there is a closed bidding process. Or the next witness indicated there's a closed bidding process. There's, field turf is the preferred uh, installer of artificial turf for MCP. They've never put those out for bid. Okay. So, um, so the, I guess the, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what the story is here. So to me, this is the story, and if this is not the story, you let me know. That, um, that, there is uncertainty as to what the actual costs will be. That uncertainty appears now to be even more so because now we're looking at a different kind of material. The added to that dilemma is the uncertainty that some apparently have, have expressed through the legal um, arena as to how the uh, folks are selected who can play on the fields, right? So, so what what I'm understanding is that your ultimate point is that if if um, the amount that we seek to to appropriate by way of a supplemental is not sufficient, then we'll pay for it some more later. And so what you're suggesting is that we get to um, certainty. So, so, but at this point, it appears that certainty is, is a, a, a field far, far away, no pun intended, because there is, there is not only a legal challenge, but there is now a second look at material. Right. So, all right, that's the story, right? Yes. Got it. All right. Thank so, you. so. Mr. Song, can you explain, tell me how long it might be before the determination is made about the material itself? Start there. Let me clarify two things. Okay. One, the legal challenges regarding the procurement process is not for the product that we're using. So it's two different issues that was referenced. Number one, the forest and material. Well, a legal challenge about a, a about a procurement process <clears throat> is is that the process you're currently using right now? Can, can I'm sorry. Can I can I help clarify yes. just that issue? There are two different. Um, uh, procurement processes, if you will, here. One relates to the field itself and to the type of material for the field and to installing the field. Um, and that is the um, issue that there is, as you said, the cost uncertainty of whether the alternate infill would cost more than the crumb rubber. And as Mr. Song indicated, uh, the school system will bid both. And then the result of the bid process will then tell us what those costs will be. Um, the second issue relates to the use agreement um, and uh, the playing time on the field. And so that's the issue um, that um, Mr. Schussler is uh, and his organization are disputing the process of. That relates to um, the organizations that are, uh, and this has happened with a number of the school systems fields, organizations that are offering to put up some of the costs of constructing the field in return for a use agreement. That process to, to determine which um, entity the school system will partner with is a different process than what type of field they will use. So those are two separate issues. So given the uh, two separate issues that we're talking about, to address the number of first issue regarding the 
uh, procurement of the product uh, being installed. If you look at the artificial turf, there are three major components. Number one is actual turf itself. Okay, it's carpeted material, artificial turf that goes down. The second component is, is the infill mix, and there are a variety of different infill mixes um, that are valuable that we're talking about. The third component is the um, preparation of the site work that's necessary in order to install the artificial turf. Um, the statement that was made about not bidding out is not actually correct. The uh, MCPS as an agency is a member of a purchasing network. It's called Keystone Purchasing Network. It's a national purchasing network that we are piggybacking on already bid out product that we believe it is probably one of the best product based on our research and most it's one of the product that has done the most extensive research on the safety issues and longevity of the product and maintainability of the product that it stands for so given that it was a product that already was on the bid list that we are eligible to use that purchasing network has been done and it has been exercised far as the Preparation of the site work that are required to install these turf has been bid on multiple occasions to get the best pricing that are needed to install. Now, um, so the procurement process for the actual installation has been addressed, and there is no challenges on that portion of legal challenges. The challenges associated with the selection of the partners is what we are talking about and that's the part because it is currently being reviewed by the legal counsels that I do not want to disclose the details that could potentially compromise the positions at this time. I, I appreciate that. I don't want to take up a, a lot of time with it. We, we're going to talk about this again at the educate. Okay. Um, but, but I, I just think, <clears throat> excuse me, I am, um, that there seem to be a lot of moving parts here. Um, I, I I would hope that the the Board of Education would have resolved some of this before you know we're we're sitting here with it. Um, so, but I, I look forward to the to to taking this up uh, on the Ed committee. Thank you very much, Councilmember Branson, Councilmember Reamer. <clears throat> Just wanted to express. Uh, I guess to the board that I'm pleased that they're bidding out alternative fills and uh, I recall we discussed this before and you guessed that it might be in the tens of thousands of dollars for an alternative fill. I don't know if that's still a, a ballpark or a soccer field estimate that you'll stand behind but um, <clears throat> in any event uh, it, 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 I think it's worth doing. You know, I think it'll put a lot of people at ease about the health impacts you know, those questions aren't known, but they're, they're questions that are very real. Yes, Mr. Rimmer, I, I don't recall stating any uh, numbers uh, that, are, that are differential between the um, Chrome rubber versus, but I, I know that it costs. Sorry, it was Mike Riley. I apologize. It okay. wasn't you. Thank um, you. But however, I know it costs more than the Chrome rubbers that we are using at this point. And um, so even though uh, there's a lot of support moving towards using the coconut fiber slash the cork materials infill mixes mainly because it, it does not produce as much of heat during the hot summer days and it is of um, what it claims to be as less toxic materials than the corroborate material. Uh, it, all somewhat of a material data that is really not substantiated. So you know, throughout the last year uh, we've been looking at again performance of the infill mix that has been installed at Universal Mellon to see how it performs and how long it lasts and what kind of other safety factors exist. So we'd like to install, but however, we'd like to bid out the project and see what cost benefit it brings. Um, I don't have the magnitude of the cost and it's just, it would be very difficult to say, so, yeah, we're gonna install this regardless of what it costs at this point. All right, well, thank you very much, Mr. Song. We will take this up, like I said, uh, to my colleagues in, uh, in the committee education uh, session. And um, should any of my colleagues want to attend, I certainly invite them to. 
it should be a very interesting discussion. Thank you very much for your testimony. This hearing is now closed. All right, folks, we're moving back into our uh, work session on the White Oak Science Gateway Master Plan and Subdivision Stage and Policy Amendment. White Oak Staging Amendments. Uh, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, well, last we left the um, uh, packets were on pay, uh, item 5A, uh, getting on to item number 2 on page 4 of that. So that's where we are at this minute. Uh, do we, Ms. Sturgeon, do we have a map to show council members where we are? If I can pull it back up, yes, it will um, take me a second. Uh, the first one up, uh, there's no, this has to do with the commercial properties on the corner of New Hampshire and Lockwood Drive.